And now uh, I would like to uh, call upon. Uh, it's a uh, joint presentation from EIL, Mr. Anil Kumar and Ms. Shilpa Singh. Uh, I'll give a brief of their uh, yeah, a brief about them. Uh, Mr. Anil Kumar is a Chief General Manager in Process Design and Development Department at EIL. He has over two and a half decades of extensive experience encompassing over refinery configuration studies, conceptualization studies, technical due diligence, vision plans for clients, basic and detailed engineering, both grassroots uh, units as well as complex revamps, uh, in-house technology development and various other technical services for refineries and petrochemical complexes. Uh, Ms. Shilpa is general manager in EIL's heat, heat transfer department and she leads a team of chemical engineers involved in grassroots designs, revamp studies, capacity and efficiency improvement projects for fired heater systems. She holds a B.Tech degree in chemical engineering from IIT Delhi and she has over 24 years of experience in this field. So now I invite Mr. Anil and Ms. Shilpa for their presentation. It is my privilege to be giving this presentation in front of this esteemed audience. And uh, good evening to all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Shilpa Singh, as I have been introduced. I work for Engineers India Limited. Those of you who don't know me already, uh, I am looking after fired heaters in EIL. So this evening, me and my colleague, Mr. Anil Kumar, would like to give presentation on digital solutions for efficient operation. So as a step towards digitalization, EIL has developed many softwares. I would like to talk about heater-related software, which is meant for efficiency, improvement, and operational optimization. Uh, later on, Mr. Anil Kumar would take up NCHP and NGRAGE. Those are other two softwares for optimization. So when we talk of fired heaters, uh, we all know heaters are meant for uh, heating process fluids. In, while doing so, they consume a lot of fuel. And as a result, uh, they produce or they uh, give uh, out lots of uh, emissions like CO2, NOx, SOx, and all. So while we are improving the efficiency of fired heaters, our first target is to improve refinery GRM. But as a result, we also reduce the carbon emission or the carbon footprint along with. How heaters have developed? Till early 80s, this introduction is important because we would be talking about comparative figures uh, in the later slides. So till early 80s, we used to have mostly natural draft type heaters and the efficiencies were of the order of 80%. During early 90s, uh, 80s to 90s, the fuel cost went up, the CPCB norms became more stringent, efficiencies were improved with the help with the aid of cast air preheaters or steam generation. Then from 90s onwards, outboard air preheating uh, has been utilized in low temperature uh, zone also and the efficiencies of the orders of 92% are achievable, which is the current industry standard in most of the refineries. Now this bar chart shows that my radiant is going to remain the same. My convection is going to remain the same. Please pardon my these technical terms, even if you don't understand. The intent of showing this slide is the 6 plus 2 percent, which is there in green and light blue. Rest of the components will still remain the same, even if we improve the efficiency. It is only this 6 percent, which is available for efficiency improvement. Rest has already been consumed by my process fluid. So in this 6%, if I improve the efficiency of a furnace by, say, 1%, it is going to mean a lot of saving in terms of money, depending on the heater duty. And another point, this 6% cannot be brought down to zero. Because uh, those who are aware or those who are familiar with fired heaters, they would know that the flue gases from heater are going to leave at certain temperature. So this 6% cannot be brought down to zero. So why there is a need for digitalization or real-time optimization in a fired heater? 
Uh, this software is meant for efficiency improvement in old installations. It is not meant for new installations because it is assumed that the new installations are already operating at maximum possible efficiency. They have been designed accordingly. So my old installations could be a decade old, could be two decades old, could be three decades old. And with age, the heat transfer area has deteriorated. My heater has seen drastic changes in terms of fuel composition. Initially, the heaters were designed for fuel oil. It is possible that the same heater is firing cleaner, much, much cleaner fuel gases at this point of time. The amount of sulfur in fuel has gone down. So all these should affect the set points or the operational targets of my furnace. This software can identify those targets. It can let you know, but it doesn't take over your system. That is one, the, that freedom always lies with the refiner. It only gives recommendations. It is up to you because you are, you know, the every heater is a child to a refiner. So a refiner knows their child best. So if the operator wants to go uh, as per the recommendations, the software will let you know what the advantages or the, what the benefits are going to be. Now this inch RT HTR software enables modulating parameters or the set points, like I said. It can let you know what the improved efficiency level is going to be. It can be quantified. It can be reflected in terms of uh, absolute figures. Sometimes uh, it so happens in a refinery that my prime focus is efficiency improvement. Now, efficiency for efficiency, the simplest parameter is my flue gas exiting the heater. My aim would be to bring it down as much as possible. So while I am focusing on efficiency, the other, some few other parameters take a backseat. Like my uh, ID fan or stack may be operating at a temperature lower than the dew point. So those who are familiar with heater, they would know the terms like dew point. So this uh, software is able to predict if there are any equipment uh, which uh, uh, are operating in danger zone, it will recommend how those equipment can be protected. And uh, it can recommend uh, changes in your operational philosophy so that the equipment have a longer life. Another thing is that uh, while I'm talking about operational efficiency, I'm talking about doing so with the existing system. This software would not recommend any hardware modifications. That, it can, that can be a long-term plan for refinery. But right now, this software is aiming at the short-term plan. The short-term plan is to maximize the efficiency with my existing setup. I'm not investing money in hardware modifications. But the software can let you know what hardware modifications can improve the efficiency further if the potential is available in the system. Now, this is not important, but uh, let us say EL has credentials, why it has gone into digital solution for uh, fired heaters. Uh, uh, this software has been developed utilizing experience of more than 400 fire heaters which have been designed in-house. The innumerable number of performance studies have been carried out, troubleshooting uh, studies have been carried out. So the software involves all the know-how and the data bank available with EIL, and the prediction of performance is based on all that knowledge. When I talk about 1% increase in efficiency, anybody would ask, are there any tangible benefits? Can I measure it? What are the parameters which you are going to let me know when we are talking about 1% increase in efficiency? For this, let us take the case of a typical crude heater in 9 mm TPA refinery, which is going to be of the order of 80 to 90 million, operating at 90% efficiency. So 90% is in industry standard, which is not less by any means. But we are still targeting 1% increase in efficiency of this crude heater. So the tangible benefits, first and foremost, could be in terms of fuel saving, which could be of the order of 900 mm TPA. 900 TPA, sorry. OPEX saving could amount to 2.4 crores per annum. And as a bonus, the CO2 gets reduced by 2,700 tons per annum. So this is just by 
improving the efficiency or improving the operating parameters of the system which the software is going to recommend. And like I said, effective utilization of assets is also going to be recommended. It is up to the refiner, refiner to uh, see if they want to go for long-term solution of uh, hardware modifications or they want to leave it to optimization of the current operating parameters only. The software targets following major parameters, which are the lowest hanging fruits. They do not need any capital investment. First is excess air control. Everybody knows more the air going into the system, more would be the loss of efficiency. Sometimes uh, as a refiner, you may have seen conflicting indications from uh, indications from uh, say your O2 analyzer and your air uh, combustion air measurement. These are two things which indicate what the excess air is. So the conflicting, uh, if there are conflicting uh, readings because of erroneous uh, measurements from these instruments, how would you know what excess air should I maintain? So depending on your fuel quality, the actual fuel quality can be built into the software. It will let you know what the amount of air should be with the varying fuel gases, even if you are varying the fuel gas composition every day, you can feed the different fuel gas compositions into the software and you can have a set value for excess air on a daily basis, which is not possible uh, by the operator at times because minor variations in fuel gas compositions always go unnoticed. Stack temperature can be controlled uh, for that uh, if there is any change in sulfur content of the fuel, we can let you know what the exit stack temperature should be, whether it is too high or too low, whatever the operating value is, the target value can be recommended and stack damper can be adjusted. The amount of adjustment is going to be recommended by the software so that the operator can be confident what, uh, in the steps they are going to take to uh, achieve the best efficiency in terms of stack temperature or the outlet temperature. The right opening of stack damper also affects your uh, draft which is there at arch. So those kind of safeguards are also built into the software. The safeguards are also in terms of CO measurement while we, while we are doing the ox excess oxygen adjustment also. Uh, while we are doing so, it is assumed that periodic maintenance is of all the equipment is being taken care, the suit blowers are utilized as per the frequency, recommended frequency, the burner are being maintained and the refractory is in healthy conditions. So this is a pictorial representation of what are measurable parameters go into the software. Mostly these could be on feed side, this could be on fuel side or the firing side or these could be on the uh, sorry, uh, this could be on the combustion air the, or the APS system side. Most of the installations have uh, instruments to measure all these parameters. So these can be fed directly from the uh, DCS outputs. Right now the software is not directly linked to the DCS because the intent is not to disturb the system straight away. The system uh, remains as it is. It is the recommendations which are uh, required to be adopted by the operator and then you can see the results or the benefits which can be achieved. Now there could be some parameters which go unnoticed in daily operation like I said the sulfur content in fuel this can be built into the software. The software has a capability of feeding the feed, fuel data and then res results are reported accordingly. Excess air is not measured directly. So the software can let you know where your heater is operating right now. Ambient conditions is a novel parameter uh, because uh, it is important to understand that uh, a heater is going to operate differently if the ambient temperature is let us say 1 degree C in winter and around 45 degree C let us say in summer. So I can utilize my existing hardware to give me more efficiency with a varying ambient temperature. So the software has a built-in feature to 
adjust the recommendations based on the ambient temperature. And it can take care of all the process variations, like hydrogen is coming into the system, so it can let you know whether any safeguards are being compromised or not. There always exists an opportunity to optimize in the existing systems. We might be operating at the best possible efficiency. We might be taking care of one parameter or two at a time, but it is a difficult task to integrate the, all these all together manually. So the software will do that for us. So the major parameters, intelligence can be implemented into flue gas exit temperature, excess air, APH bypass damper settings, and stack damper settings. Those are the tangible parameters which can be reflected. Like, uh, in, as covered in the earlier slides, the inputs are mostly fuel specification, fuel flow rate, excess air, damper settings, and other things which are available either from the DCS or manually from the site. And the output can let you know what the trimmed excess air is going to be. It can let you know what the bypass damper setting should be. Uh, sometimes it happens that the stack damper is kept open and the ID fan is also running. Uh, we have come across situations where ID fan has been found limiting at times in achieving maximum uh, or uh, should I say optimum performance from air preheater. So in certain cases it has been found that the stack damper is kept open so that because my ID fan is controlling uh, or uh, it is limiting. We have tried to do adjustments in such cases and in certain instances, it has been found that keeping the stack damper open while the ID fan is running, at times it does not help. At times, it uh, results in short circuiting or bypassing of the cold flue gases into the system. So you are not just overloading your ID fan, you are also losing a lot of efficiency in the APH because otherwise that area and that pressure drop could have been utilized to recover more heat from flue gases. So such kind of situations can be identified by the software. It can let you know, it can do the heat and material balance in the heater and it can let you know whether any short circuiting or flue gas bypassing is happening into the system because as a practice the refiners don't do that on a daily basis. It is the designer who has done it in the first go and probably unless, until we have gone for a revamp, those kind of calculations would not be done again. So the software can gives you the ability to do all those calculations and it can let you know whether any bypassing is happening or not so that you can take suitable action Im immediately. Preventive maintenance, like I said, if my APH is operating at a temperature much lower than the dew point, it will let you know, it will warn you, it will give you a warning, it will let, ask you to adjust the bypass damper setting so that my ID fan and stack health is not compromised. Hardware limitations, what kind of hardware limitations we are talking about? Like when we have moved from high sulfur fuels to fuel gases, cleaner fuel gases, and these days to hydrogen rich fuel gases, NG, which is relatively very, very clean. So I have a potential to recover more heat from these flue gases. But my APH was probably designed for recovering, flu, uh, recovering heat from fuel oil only. So it is, possible that this 1% efficiency gain I have achieved, okay, but my hardware is limiting, there is still potential in the flue gases. This efficiency gain could have been increased much further, so the software will let you know if there are any hardware limitations and you can take the action suitably as a long term plan, a revamp can be planned. Uh, this is how the software looks like, I'll quickly go through this, this is the input card and the output card which gives the, which reproduces the input data which has gone into the software and it also gives you the output and the recommendations absolute, in absolute terms what is the benefit going to be. So apart from crude heater, a typical 9 mm TPA refinery is going to have other heaters like vacuum heater, VGO and so if we combine all these together and let us say 1% efficiency increase in most of the heaters or 
even if we say 0.5% in smaller heaters where the potential is not so much, our annual benefit in terms of fuel is going to be substantial in uh, the higher capacity heaters. Apart from that, we are going to have significant carbon footprint reduction in all the furnaces. And in terms of money, it could amount to somewhere around 5.5 crores per annum. So investing in a software is not going to, uh, I mean, it is not going to uh, be very tough for you because eventually the returns are going to be much more substantial. So to sum up, it aims the software called Eng RT HTR. It has been named as Eng RT HTR. And uh, it aims at operating the furnace near the best achievable efficiency. It optimizes the furnace for varying operating conditions. Varying conditions could be due to fuel, could be due to feed, could be due to the operating duty. And it ensures that the semi system operates in a safer zone at all points of time. Various modalities can be worked out, but uh, as of now, we foresee uh, time duration of around four weeks for pre-implementation pre activities, which includes the site visit, evaluation of operating data, then around four weeks for implementation phase where the data is evaluated, recommendations are made, adjustments are made, and the benefits are summarized. Then there is going to be a 24 by 7 support because obviously the operating conditions are going to keep varying. They don't vary for just the first eight weeks, they are going to keep varying. So there is going to be initial hand-holding for the first eight weeks. Initial hand-holding for the first eight weeks. After that, we are sure the refiners would be confident enough to use this software on their own. It is a web-based software. It can be used on any of the systems which has internet. And for 24 by 7 support, EIL is always going to be there. So thank you all. This is from my side. I would like to invite Anil Kumar to take up further. Thank you, Shilpa. Uh, good evening, all uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the second offering on the digital uh, side from EIL is the uh, ENG CHP, which is primarily an optimizer for uh, steam and power networks. It is uh, basically a linear programming tool in which uh, all the inputs and the outputs are coded in, the constraints are set in, the uh, objective function is defined as the, you know, uh, generating the utilities at minimum cost. The optimizer basically tells us what uh, each component, how it is to be operated, at what capacity it is to be operated. We have, uh, you know, implemented this in uh, two of the Indian refineries and some gas plants abroad, and it is uh, giving good results. It has given good results, and it is still giving good results. So in terms of input, if you look, uh, the flow rate of, in fact, the consumption and generation of steam are coded in at unit level. And in fact, at each of the unit operations, this can be done in terms of uh, steam power, temperature pressure, and even the type of fuel. The output that comes out looks something like this, in which the, the uh, optimized operating rates for boilers, STGs, and GTGs are predicted in the most optimized fashion. Uh, this is one of the uh, case studies for an Indian client in which the, the uh, operation of the CPP was optimized using this software, resulting in a saving of about 300 kgs of uh, natural gas per hour and associated savings in the carbon emission and the uh, water makeup. So this software you can uh, actually use at localized CPP level across the entire plant with only major consumers and in fact and the, the entire complex with all major and minor consumers uh, put in. The second uh, software in line is the Eng Rage, which is basically a reconciliation and a gross error reduction tool. It, this 
basically uh, resolves the inconsistencies that we see between the data that we collect from the plant and the known mass and heat balances by reducing the random errors and eliminating the gross errors. Uh, we have used this extensively offline for various clients while we are reconciling the data in, in, in uh, operations like the heat exchanges, the uh, columns, the overall refinery balances. And we have been able to gather some quite logical data and analyze that or interpret that. This is a simple example wherein we have uh, reconciled the data across the heat exchanger in one of the plants. So these are the two uh, software which uh, we wanted to, three, so in fact, softwares. And another related uh, software, uh, in fact, uh, that we have recently started is the digital handover of plants. We, we are doing it currently for two of our clients, wherein all the information right from the BDIP stage till the commissioning stage is collected digitally and then linked intelligently to the database of the uh, client. This is the first step towards generating the digital twin for the entire uh, complex. So this is uh, in all what we had uh, for today. Me and Chilpa, these three software plus one offering for the digital twin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Anil Kumar and Ms. Shilpa Singh for this enlightening presentation. Uh, you all uh, touched upon the areas which actually uh, hits the refiner most, that is the fuel consumption. So heater optimization, as Ms. Shilpa Singh told, that if for a 9 million ton refinery, uh, if I increase the efficiency of the, say, crude heater by 1% from 90 to 91%, We'll be saving around 900 tons per annum of fuel, as well as reduce the carbon footprint by reduction of CO2 emissions to the tune of 2,700 tons per annum. So this is what we are all looking forward because uh, in the days to come and right from now also, uh, the reduction of carbon footprint is very important. And 1% efficiency improvement in any of our heaters is going to go a long way in uh, reducing the carbon footprints. Uh, also, the other two softwares. Uh, on in CHP, uh, on steam and power optimization, also finally leads to the energy efficiency and reduction in carbon footprint, as well as this uh, reconciliation sort of a data which uh, eliminates the gross error uh, in our uh, refinery mass balance. So these all uh, will be uh, as good as the instrumentation also that we are having in the system. So in order to make these software successful, I think the instrumentation part also has to be successful. It has to be very robust and uh, very reliable. So thank you so much, EIL team.